This episode of the Crack House Chronicles is brought to you by CVC Visual Concepts. I'm going to tell you, these guys have got it going on when it comes to your printing needs. Whether it's stickers, banners, posters, t-shirts, oh my god, t-shirts, yes, uh, decals, whatever your printing need is, these guys can do it. They do, they do great quality, they've got a quick turnaround time. Our latest stickers we had done for the Crack House Chronicles, they did them for us. Great quality, good product. Give them a call today. I'm going to put a link to their website and Facebook page in the description for this podcast. Also, if you contact them and you mention Crack House Chronicles, they will give you 10% off your bill. So why not check them out today? Give them a call. That's CVC Visual Concepts. Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome to the Crack House Chronicles. I am Donnie, your host, and with me, as always, Dale. What's, what's up, Donnie? How are you doing today? Buddy? I'm doing great, man. It's great to have you back in the Crack House, do another episode. Um, um, this is going to be a good one because it's uh, it's just all over the place. Oh, this this story here that we're going to do today it will it will blow your mind because this takes us back. If everyone remembers, I know everyone remembers 9/11. I mean, everyone remembers what they were doing when where I they, and where they were yeah exactly yeah. I remember exactly where I was when when the, when 9-11 took place yeah me too when the first plane hit the the first tower I knew where I was I mean I, I you'll never forget that it's yeah. kind of like you know you knew you know, us older people you remember where you were when you heard Elvis died <laughs> so you know you, you, there's certain things like that in life you don't forget where you were that's right so but this story here it's not really to do with 9-11 it's it's more of a person that disappeared on, supposedly, on 9-11. Right. They really don't know what happened to her. But this is the story of Sneha Ann Phillip. And she lived in New York, right there, close to the location of the Twin Towers. Mm-hmm. She was born on October 7th, 1969. give you a little background on her. She was born in the Indian state of Kerala. And her family moved to upstate New York. I think they settled in around the Albany area. She graduated from John Hopkins University, and she decided to pursue a career in the medical field. Yeah, she wanted to follow in her father's footsteps. Yeah. So she enrolled in the Chicago School of Medicine in 1995, and that's where she met Ron Lieberman. He was a student, a medical student there, but he was a year behind her. He was from Los Angeles, California. And they began dating. And they both had the same creative interest, art, music, different types of things, and they hit it off pretty quickly. But him being behind her a year in medical school, she wanted to graduate when he did. Right. And she took off a year from school. she done some traveling, different things. She went to Italy or something. Right? Yeah, yeah, Europe, Italy, and different things. It's kind of weird, I thought, that, you know, well, you, you catch up in school, I'm going to Italy. For yeah, <laughs> I guess when you got money, you go to medical school, you got money, you can do that sort of thing. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so she, she went and done some traveling while he... Caught, caught up, up with her, yeah. yeah. And so she, they could graduate at the same time. After graduation, they moved to New York City, where they both gained internships, Dale. Uh, Lieberman, he was at Jacoby Medical Center in the Bronx, and Sneha did her internship at Cabrini Medical Center. Uh, it was close to their apartment in the East Village. They were married in May of 2000, and they had a small ceremony in Dutchess County, and... They both were from different religions. He was Jewish, and and so they had a, a combined Jewish and South Indian Christian element wedding. It was a small wedding, like I said. I don't know. I'm gonna butcher, I'm gonna butcher this word, but he gave her uh, a menu. Menu. It's a traditional Malay Christian wedding pendant. It's shaped like a gold teardrop with a diamond set in it. Right. Yeah. And. So they combined the two religions together when they when they got married. They moved into a, a larger apartment in the Battery Park City shortly after the wedding. Now, getting into Sneha, she was last seen on September the 10th, 2001. This was the day before 9-11. Right, right. On the day she disappeared, her uh, she was off from work. According to her husband, she was planning to spend the day cleaning up the apartment. She had a cousin coming over from somewhere. Yeah, a couple of days, right? Yeah, they was going to spend the night and do some different things. 
And that day she had different things planned. She had spent a two hour online chat with her mother. When she, she told her she had to do some errands and whatnot. And also she was planning on visiting the windows on the world restaurant on top of the uh, North tower. Yeah. World Trade Center North Tower. Yeah, one of her friends had said that they were going to be married there, and she wanted to go by and check it out before the wedding. Yeah. All right. She didn't say when. She just wanted to go check it out. But it was going to be the wedding wasn't until next spring. Right. But she said she was, but, you know, we don't know if she went there or not. But she lived right there, so it would be. It was just like blocks from yeah, where the World Trade Center. Right. She had told her mother she had different things to do, but she signed off. She's talked to her mother for almost two hours. I guess this was a instant messenger or something like that aim or something or yeah it didn't say what this but was, it was a basically an instant mention this right? was 2001 so yes it wasn't facebook no it wasn't been icq or something weird yeah so youngsters yeah but she signed off from uh talking with the mother she did some errands and she, then she went to a the neighborhood dry cleaners then she went to century 21 which was not a uh real estate agency <laughs> but a exactly what i thought yeah I mean, when i first heard that i thought it was you know century 21 it was real estate agency but no it's a it's a, I think it's an upper end retail store. Yeah, high end uh, clothes store. Yeah, they held, they they sell different lot lots of different things. But she went in there and she spent I think it's over five hundred bucks yep. according to credit card receipts and everything. She bought uh, lingerie, a dress, pantyhose, bed linens. Bed linens is kind of weird, but yeah. And after that, she was in the annex part of the store, and she bought three pairs of shoes. Now. The Century 21 store, they have her recorded during this shopping trip. Right. All right. Uh, tape image and credit card records are the last confirmed reports of Sneha's presence anywhere. And the clerk reported that there was another Indian lady that was with her, but she's never on camera, so we don't know if that's true or not. And, and you know, I've, I've, I've had some theories on this, too. You know, the store clerk said she was with her. Maybe, you know, I don't know if... She just happened to know her and saw her in the store, and they hung out a little bit. Because I know when I go to a store, if I see somebody in there, you know, I'll talk to them and hang out for a little bit. And, and then get done what you got to do. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if the... That could be true. You know, the store busy. I don't know if the, the clerk assumed that they were together since they were both Indian. Right. You know, that I've always led, you know, thought about that. I don't, you know, I don't know whether they were or not. This was the last sighting of Sneha. Of anywhere a confirmed sighting that is and we're going to get into that just a little bit later it's also a note that uh the stuff she bought has never been found the bags nothing nothing they've never been found at all not in her home not in anybody else's home nobody's ever reported having them has just disappeared with her on the morning of september 10th ron and sneha have to go to court and sneha is formally arraigned on a misdemeanor charge of falsely reporting a sexual advancement apparently she had reported that someone she had worked with had made a sexual advance toward her or groped her in some way but it was a false report according to police report the couple were found arguing outside the courtroom right which they both well which he denies yeah they denied it and well he denied she don't she wasn't here to, right. to deny anything but uh he denied it and they said that they even the police report said they were shouting out in, out in the courtroom. But she enters a plea of not guilty. Well, this is also after they had said that maybe she had some problems with alcohol and was going to maybe let her go out of this program. And then, then she comes up with this, this charge, and that's why they're saying that maybe it was a, a trumped-up charge just to get her out of that. Mm -hmm. So it's just all over the place. This story is it's really crazy. But around 10 a.m. that morning... Sneha and Ron have breakfast together. She tells him her plan, that she's going to do housework that day, running errands, and, and seems to be in a pretty good mood, according to Ron. And, you know, there was nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing fishy going on. No. Right. Around 11 a.m., Ron leaves for work, and according to an early news article, his shift was scheduled to start at 1 p.m. and end at 9 p.m. So it was just the bulk of the day, the middle part of the day. And sometime before 4 p.m., talks to her mother via messenger for two hours. At 4 p.m., Sneha signs off instant messenger account. And at 5, she is shown leaving the apartment building on security footage. Right. And this, this time is where she goes to Century 21. Uh, Sneha is last seen on footage, security footage 
shopping at Century 21. She's carrying two large shopping bags, like you said, Dale, and containing about $550 worth of lingerie, shoes, bed linens. Now, we us getting into September 11th, the early morning hours of September 11th. This is just like after midnight. But he went home that night, right? And she, yeah. She was not there. He goes home. Which is not that much unusual for her, but she did not let him know where she was or who she was staying with. She was, had a habit of going out and staying with her friends or whatever. She didn't want to come home. But uh, she always let him know where she was. Yeah, it's been reported that she had a attending uh, lesbian bars. And they don't know, you know, this this led up to, you know, her sexual assault, that she didn't want to be around or put herself in a situation of being around a male, but she liked the bar scene. Right. So she was going to lesbian bars, hanging out, and doing that kind of stuff. But, like you said, she did have the habit of not coming home. Yep. She would go to a friend's house, spend the night, and, you know, it'd be, I don't know. I don't, I've never had a New York lifestyle. And, you know, if you go to a bar, is, is it easier to crash two blocks away from a bar instead of going 20 blocks home? Right. And then getting up going home the next day? Yeah, probably if you know, all that train, you have to get a subway, and it could be a little sketchy probably. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know for sure. I've never had that lifestyle, so I don't know. We don't, we don't have it here in the backwoods of North Carolina. We don't have that problem. No. <laughs> no, we live in a one stoplight town, so you know, they roll up the sidewalks at midnight. So at around midnight, possibly eleven thirty, Ron returns home from work and the apartment's empty. And he's he's pretty irritated because him and Sneha had, had an agreement, you know, if she was gonna stay out at night or do anything like that, she was gonna let him know where she was. But she didn't check in. And he was pretty irritated about that. So he assumed that she spent the night with a cousin. And she was just a few blocks away or ended up in West Village with her brother, John. She had a brother named John. Right. Now, this is reported, too, that about 4 a.m. that morning on September 11th, someone uses the apartment phone to call Ron's cell phone. Right. Ron doesn't remember this call, but he thinks he may have tried to call to check his voicemail. Yeah. And uh, also, she did not have a cell phone at this time. No. So he couldn't just call her up and say, where you at? So. Mm-mm. This was still in the cell phone early days. Yeah. I not, mean, not everybody had one. No, this was cell technology was out there. But, you know, like Dale said, not everyone had one. But he, you know, he called his home, used the home phone to check his voicemail. So I guess back then they, they charged you for minutes. Still, yeah. Instead of using the cell phone to call your voicemail, you use the home phone. Right. All right. But he don't remember it. That That's... that's kind of fishy for me yeah. i mean a lot of stuff he says is kind of fishy he's like he's covering up a lot of stuff he don't want people to know what really was going on yeah and around 6 a.m that morning ron uh goes to work and attends a meeting uptown new york he also knows that sneha had not returned during the night right all right now, this is getting into well right now we're getting into the early morning hours of uh the yeah, the attack on New York, and this was about eight forty three, and it was just three minutes before the first plane crashed into the World Trade Center. A thin brunette woman is captured on security footage in the the lobby of Sneha and Ron's apartment building, but she lingers by the elevators and then walks out of the building. It looks a lot like her, but just so happened that the sun is coming in at the perfect angle. To really hit the lens of the camera, so you really can't tell who it is. But her, her brother and her parents, and even Ron said, the way this woman walks and the way she carries herself looks like Sneha. Right. I mean, but there's it's never it's never been proven if it's her or not. So the last confirmed report of her being anywhere was oh, at Century Twenty One. Right. On their their security footage. For sure. Yeah. And the the credit card transaction that was their last known place for sure yeah because after that there's been no credit card transactions or any sighting of her since then nothing but her clothing is not consistent with that of uh, sneha's in the century 21 footage but cannot be clearly seen so you know i guess camera technology wasn't the best back then it's not the best now so okay. I'm sure then it was really sketchy yeah and at about 9 a.m ron's work meeting ends and then that's where he learns of the World Trade Center attack. Right. And Ron makes it back to their apartment building, but is unable to enter because the power was out and the doors will not open without electricity. 
All right. Yep, locked out. It's kind of weird, dude. Yeah. No Uber ride, but... So. No Uber at all. He has to go stay at a friend's house. Yeah. And still no word of Sneha at all. Nothing. No. And he was not able to get in touch with her or anything like that. I'm trying to call the apartment and leaving messages, but nothing. Yeah. But I don't know how he could think. She was in there if he couldn't get in unless she was went there while he was at work. Mm-hmm. So he slept on a friend's couch. Didn't get much sleep. Just worrying all day where she was. Yeah. When Ron makes it back after he, you know, he spent the night on his uh, friend's couch, he makes it back to the apartment. But on the, the power's back on. He's able to get in the apartment building. Right. Um, he gets in there, and a window had been left open, and there was dust and soot everywhere, all yeah. over the floors. Yes, the whole uh, the whole apartment was covered in a layer of uh, dust and soot. And he could tell that nobody had been there. There were no footprints, only cat footprints. Yeah, only the cat left prints. Yeah. He knew right then Sneha had not been home. Yeah, no one had been in there. They reported her missing to right. the police, but uh, with all the 9-11 stuff going on, and I mean, they people were being reported missing like crazy. Yeah. And they, she just became a, a name at this point. She was just one of the thousands that were missing. And technically, since she was missing the day before, she was not a priority at all. No, uh uh-uh. Because that was the last time she was seen was on September 10th. Right. But, you know, they were they were putting out flyers. They'd, I think they'd printed out like five, 8,000 flyers and was putting them out everywhere. But, you know, everybody was putting out flyers too. Right. But to this point where uh, Ron went to Sneha's brother, John, and they, I think it was John that devised the plan. He was going to get on the news and say that he was on the phone with her. Yeah. He told him, uh, I think uh – Ron had told John that they need to come up with something to just kind of figure out that maybe that she did went missing on that day, but he kind of took it off a little bit too far. Yeah, and I think this was something he was he was going to regret later, but he, he told them that he had actually spoke to her that morning. He was on the phone with her when she was there and, and on the, in the towers. Yeah, in the towers and said she had to go, she had to help someone. Right. So then it went from... Just being a missing person, too. She was a uh, sensationalized all over the news. Yeah, it was. It was. She was uh, all over the news. This was a doctor that was helping somebody. Right. Refused so, to leave to help the help the hurt. Yeah. Sneha immediately became one of the nine more than nine thousand people reported missing as a result of September 11th, but she remained one of the few missing people that could not be officially determined to be a victim of the terrorist attack. Right. And after filing two missing persons report. And hiring his own investigator, Ron discovered security footage. This is where he discovered that security footage of an unidentifiable brunette standing in the lobby of their apartment building on the morning of September 11th. It was only more. It was just. It was just a few minutes before the the first plane hit the tower. So you know, it leads you to think that you you don't know if it was that clock on that security camera was off or not, or you know if it was off a couple minutes or it wasn't set correctly or something. But it was just a few minutes before that first plane hit. And she lingers near the elevator, then turns abruptly and walks out of the building. So we don't know if, you know, she heard the crash. She don't know. We don't know. Yeah, that's right. And they said they didn't, couldn't really tell, but the, the police detectives said they thought it was her. The woman on this security footage in the lobby was not carrying any bags. Right. So we don't know what happened to those bags. We don't know if she left them wherever she stayed that night. If, if this was Sneha at all, we don't know. That could be the point, you know. Be leave them there. Maybe she bought them for someone else. But those bags have never turned up. Never, never. We don't know if she left them wherever she stayed, if she gave them to someone. But you know, you'd think that you know this high profile of a case. If somebody had those bags, they would have turned them in, right? Or something. Something would have happened, but nothing. But anyway, speculation of Sneha's disappearance, her movements in the days before. It was just not. It was just undetermined whether she was still alive or not. And the mystery of her fate persists with very difficult possibilities and bizarre de- details, some of which have put her family, police, and the public at odds. Yes. Uh, they have, you know, they don't know. And, and also this investigator, he turned all of his findings over to Ron, but those findings have never been released. They've never been. No, the, the police seem to think this lady had a double life. She was, like, doing stuff, going out and drinking and doing all this why he just thought she was going out with friends. He thought they, they think it was a little more to it than that. That's where we're going to get into some of these theories about Sneha Ockles. You know, she was attending these lesbian bars, and Ron had played it up. You know, she was 
being sexually assaulted and she just didn't want to put herself in those situations. It had also been reported too that Sneha and her brother John weren't on speaking terms. Right, which would be weird why he would come out looking for her so hard or that she would be staying with him. But they weren't on speaking terms. This was because it had been reported that uh, Sneha was caught in bed with his wife. John had caught them in bed together. That is what the rumor is. Yes. That, that is the rumor. We don't know if it's true or not, but it has been reported from several several sources. So we don't know if she was having a lesbian lifestyle or not. But, you know, she would attend these bars pretty regular and stay out all night and not come home. And, I mean, this was this, – this had gotten to the point where, you know, her and Ron even had an agreement in place. This was just – wasn't just like every once in a while. They had an agreement where, you know, if she was going to stay out, she had to report in. Yeah. That was the deal. So, obviously, this happened – Quite often. Yeah. Yeah. This wasn't just, you know, once a year type thing or work party or something. This was quite often. Said investigators also said that uh, they looked through her computer and there's nothing in there saying anything about she was planning on leaving or ditching or just running away or nothing. So it's just, it's just really hard to tell what's going on here. She left her glasses, her passport, her driver's license, her credit cards, everything except for that one American Express card. Yeah. And uh, said that they, even Lieberman had left that account open in case she needed it or leads come from somebody attempting to use it, but it has never been used since that day at uh, Century 21. Mm-hmm. The theory is, I mean, she was helping folks at the World Trade Center, helping victims. But, you know, there's also uh, conspiracy theories out there. Was she unhappy with her life? Was she unhappy with her relationship? You know, because she had been, you know, she was having to. She may, may have been having these uh, rendezvous with these ladies, and maybe she was bisexual. Maybe she was just ready to bolt. Maybe she used this as a cover to get out. It was a perfect timing to go. Yeah. And the, saw the attacks happen. It's like, yeah, this is it's time to get out because you know she'd been let go of her one internship job, right? And she was on. She got another internship, and the reason she was let go because from alcohol and being late for work. Yes. And alcohol related issues. Yeah. So I'd say that was drinking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't just, it wasn't rubbing alcohol. No. And then she picked up another internship job and. I think she had an agreement with them to attend council. Right. Yeah. I don't think it was going that well for her. No, she skipped a couple, and I think uh, they was going to let her go, too. And then this is where the uh, accusation of uh, the uh, the fellow worker groping her or whatever the sexual assault was. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why she was in court for making a false accusation. So we don't know if, you know, if it went through or not, if it was uh, – any uh, charges were pressed or not. Yeah. The prosecutor investigated the case, dropped the sexual abuse charge, and instead charged her with third-degree falsely reporting an incident. Yeah. A misdemeanor in New York. He offered to drop the charge if she recanted the original complaint, but she refused and was held overnight. But her, you know, her personal life was spiraling. I mean, she was having problems in her personal life. Yeah, she's all over the place, this lady. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me believe, too, you know, like you said... She saw 9-11 happen, and, like, you know, it, at the time, you know, even me hearing it, you didn't know this was a terrorist attack. No, I thought it was a, somebody drunk in a plane. Yeah. Because there was, you know, stuff going on then about pilots drinking and a lot of stuff like that. So I'm like, man, and this then guy the, must really been drunk. And then the second plane hit the, the South Tower, and then you knew. Something you know, was up. Yeah, something was up. And I don't know if she, hey, this is a time to, to bail and get out and start over or, or what. This was uh, also featured on Unsolved Mysteries, and nobody's ever offered any information on her. Even they found in the debris of 9-11, you know, jewelry, you know, gold, most of the gold was melted, destroyed, but uh, diamonds and different things, a lot of that's been recovered, and some of it's been re- you know, returned to family, but none of her jewelry she had. I think she had on that, that necklace, and then she had earrings, yeah. And none of that has been found or anything. Nothing. So, you know, there's no, I mean, it's, it's, it's just hard to fathom where this woman could be if she died on 9-11 or, or if she started a new life. It's hard to believe she used this to start a new life. I mean, you'd, even if she was already planning to do this, but I don't know. Just like, 
I mean, we don't in the middle of all this chaos. Was would that be the first thing you think? No one has come forward to say who she stayed with on September tenth, right. where she was that night, where are the shopping bags that you know that she bought. She had with stuff from Century Twenty One. Who was the woman with? She was with in Century Twenty One, and she was talking to. And if Snay, you know, if she stayed out all night, where did she go? Where did she eat? And with whom? Because there was no credit card transactions. Nothing. She didn't have nothing with her. So mm-hmm. Either somebody else was supporting her. Maybe she sold that six hundred dollars worth of clothes. Yeah, but you know, and it's very well possible she met she met her fate on that September tenth. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's very possible instead of going to the towers and helping people or starting a new life, she could have she could have met a killer that night. Very possible. Mm-hmm. So or she could have just been crushed in the in the attack. I don't know. Yeah. So you know, I could say, you know, if she de- if she did die in the World Trade Center, they would have recovered something. You'd think they would have recovered something. Yeah, there's a lot. Don't of, you think? There's a lot of people never recovered. So it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. What if she disappeared on her own accord? I don't know. In this day and time, it's kind of hard to disappear for this long a time. Mm-hmm. You know, eventually something's going to pop up. Unless she just put away a bunch of cash. Right. And just, but there's nothing been reported on that. You know, Ron saying that she had a large amount of cash to be right. able to to be able to start over. You know, and there's been no physical remains found from thousands and thousands of people. So, yeah. It's, I don't know, this is a hard one. And, you know, like I said, the other theory was that she was abducted and murdered. Um, yeah, could have come out of that club late. You never know. Mm-hmm. Especially there. Yeah. So if anybody's got any theories on this, if they want to voice in on it, you know, let us know what you think about what happened to Sneha. If you think she, if she died on 9-11 helping victims or if she wanted to start her own life or if, if you think she was murdered, kidnapped and murdered on september 10th let us know see what tell us what you think but uh also there's a website and um, i frequent it pretty regular called post secret have you ever looked at that website dale no i haven't i didn't know about that yeah every sunday they upload postcards people send them they're anonymous and you can post a secret on there write it on a postcard and they will post it and it's all like i say it's all anonymous but there was one postcard. Yes, I have heard about this. I forgot. Um, yeah, a few years ago, and it's a, it's a postcard of the uh, it shows the twin towers burning, and at the top uh, there's an inscription that says, "Everyone who knew me before 9/11 believes I'm dead." Hmm. That's kind of chilling, isn't it? Yeah. So you know, a lot of people speculate this could be Sneha. That that she wanted to start her life over. That she was unsatisfied, you know, with her spiral downward. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. All right, we're gonna we're gonna close out this episode. I'll say, you know, check out our website, check out our social media pages. Uh, on our website, all our social media links are on there. Just check them out. Give us your thoughts and opinions and comments on what you think might have happened to Sneha. Anything else you want to add, Dale? Uh, just if you enjoy this podcast, go to whatever platform you do and give us a good rating, and uh, we appreciate you listening. Yeah, those ratings really will help up, help they'll other people find us. It helps other people find us, and it, it moves us to the top. And that's where we want to be. Yeah, we want to get there. So, you know, we appreciate all the listeners. We appreciate everybody subscribing, telling your brothers and sisters about us, and leave us a rating. Like we said, just tell us what you think about us. All right. All that being said, this is The The Crack Crack House House Chronicles. Chronicles.